I grew up in a multi-generational conservative Seventh-day Adventist family. I was well-versed in the historic doctrines of Adventism. I even attended my first Revelation seminar when I was only nine years old. Actually, not, not even quite nine years old. And I remember just eagerly filling out those study guides, fascinated. My family instilled in me a deep love and respect for Ellen White and her writings. And I finished reading my first Ellen White book on my own when I was only 11 years old. By the time I was 20, I had read at least seven Ellen White books completely, and had read large portions of many more. My family started an SDA church plant when I was 10, and I was actively involved in that church throughout the rest of my childhood. I received straight A's in all of my Bible classes in SDA schools, lest anyone say that I never understood the doctrines. <laughs> I loved everything about being an Adventist. At times, being an Adventist gave me a sense of pride and elation. I was so blessed to have been born into the remnant church and to have been born into the truth. I had light and truth that no other church had. I was so happy to be part of God's special end times remnant church and to be spreading the three angels messages. At other times, being an Adventist sent me into crushing despair. I had been taught that if I lived up to the light that I had been given and never rejected any of it, then I would be ready to stand before God without a mediator at the close of probation. But I knew that I couldn't live up to that light. I lived in fear and uncertainty of my salvation. I used to cry myself to sleep at night, begging that God would help me to stop sinning and get one step closer to perfection. Or I would beg him to take away my free will so that I could never choose to reject him at the last minute. Anytime I sinned, I would have a picture in my head of the recording angel writing down what I had done in the books in the heavenly sanctuary, and I knew that I had to confess that sin before I forgot about it, lest any forgotten sins be held against me in the investigative judgment. Then I got out my Bible and read through the first two chapters of Ephesians, and I was completely blown away. Three things stood out to me. The first was that the Holy Spirit is the seal and guarantee of our salvation. I had always been taught that the Sabbath was the seal, and that I could not have a guarantee of salvation. This was just, I was in tears. The next thing that stood out to me was that I was dead in my transgressions and sins, and that is why I needed to be saved by grace. I can't tell you how many times I'd heard Doug Batchelor say, we are saved from our sins, not in our sins. But here the Bible said, no, you are saved while you're still dead in your transgressions and sins. For it is by grace that you have been saved. Amen. This was why I needed grace. The third thing that stood out to me was that faith is a gift and not something that I manufacture. It doesn't come from me. It comes from God. I'd always felt like I had to make myself have more faith. I had to just muster it up in myself somehow. That didn't work too well for me, and there was a reason for that. <laughs> It was at that moment that I finally got it. I trusted Jesus as my savior that night. I knew that I needed him to be my savior and substitute and that I needed his grace and nothing else. I was born again that night. The darkness lifted and it felt like something was inside me that hadn't been there before that was alive. That's the only way I can describe it. Leaving the SDA church comes at a cost, a very high cost. I've lost much leaving the SDA church, but Jesus is worth it. He's worth the cost. Knowing him is so much better than anything I ever left behind. I left the SDA church because it compromises the gospel, which is that Jesus died for our sins, was buried, and rose again. It teaches a different Jesus, and the Jesus I know now is not the same Jesus I knew in Adventism. He's completed with the atonement. He offers me full salvation assurance. He has disarmed Satan at the cross, and there was never any chance that he would fail his mission. He is my final and ultimate and only sin bearer. He is my Sabbath rest. He is my substitute, and by believing in him as my Savior and my God, I am counted righteous forever and have eternal life. He keeps me by his grace, and I know that I am saved.